you find life exhausting? Is it hard to make time for work, a social life, and still have a little me time at the end of the day? Introducing the Clone Master 3000. You could even have a few left over to conquer the galaxy. <laughs> Human cloning is a popular science fiction trope, from Star Wars to Arnie's sixth day. But is it a realistic future for us? Could we live in a world of cloned humans? Well, first of all, in real life, it doesn't quite work like that. Cloning basically involves creating a genetically identical copy of a living thing. But that copy doesn't just appear fully grown in a magical box. It has to start out like we all do, as a fertilized egg that develops in the womb before the clone baby is born and grows up at a normal rate. So by the time my clone looks like this, I'd be an old man. In fact, the only way of getting a clone the same age as you is to make one at the same time that you were made. It actually happens naturally in about 0.3% of births, producing identical twins. But those are rookie numbers if we want to realize our dreams of galactic domination. What we really need is artificial cloning, and research has made some pretty impressive inroads. Using a technique called somatic cell nuclear transfer, Genetic engineers take the DNA containing nucleus from one of your cells and inject it into an egg cell that's had its own nucleus removed. The egg is implanted in the womb and begins to develop using the genes and instructions contained in the transplanted nucleus to create an identical copy. Back in 1996, Dolly the sheep was born, the first mammal to be cloned in this way. She became the poster child for nuclear transfer and the basis of our hopes for future cloning efforts. Since then, scientists have managed to clone a whole range of other animals, including cats, deer, dogs, horses, rabbits and rats. Japanese researchers have even managed to produce clones from clones, creating 26 generations of healthy mice, totaling nearly 600 identical copies from a single individual. And not content with making copies of living creatures, advanced techniques are being pioneered to cut and paste DNA in an attempt to revive long dead animals, or even bring back extinct species. Yep, Jurassic Park style. Ah, hello Dom. Oh yeah, I've got lines. Jurassic Park reference. Scientists are attempting to use a method of genetic editing called CRISPR-Cas9 to insert fundamental bits of woolly mammoth DNA recovered from 28,000 year old frozen mammoth bodies into the eggs of elephants. Surrogate elephant mums then give birth to babies with all the physical attributes of a mammoth, like coarse red hair and extra insulating fat, allowing them to survive in colder conditions. Life really does find a way. With this firm scientific foundation, it would seem that we could soon be seeing clones on every corner. But what use would they really be? Cloned human embryos are already being used for what's known as therapeutic cloning, to produce stem cells that are compatible with a donor's body to help treat diseases. But allowing the human embryos to develop into living, breathing human copies is called reproductive cloning. And that's a whole other kettle of fish. It would help in cases where prospective parents couldn't produce their own eggs and sperm, or if they carried a recessive genetic disease. For this reason, cloning could conceivably be seen as part of the fundamental human right to have children. But the other side of the story is much, much darker. If human cloning were on the cards, then it could open up a Pandora's box of moral and ethical dilemmas. If you need to have a child by cloning technology, why use your own bog standard genes when you could use those of a beautiful celebrity or an intelligent academic? Buying and selling desirable nuclei for transfer makes children into a product, a luxury commodity. Cloning technologies could also pave the way for recreating copies of people who have died, perhaps replacing a child after an accident or illness. Plus, we know that we can make multiple generations of clones, so what stands in the way of a disposable clone society, produced purely for manual labour and dangerous tasks? Or maybe clones could be created solely for supplying organs and tissues. 
And what of the clones themselves? Does the fact that you've been willed into the world by someone with the same genes as you change the way you think about yourself? What rights would the genetic donor have over the clone? Cloning fundamentally challenges our ideas of individuality and personal identity. All these questions are unanswered because we haven't made any human clones yet. But we haven't made any human clones yet partly because these questions are so hard to answer. It's a scary moral minefield. And yet, even 20 years after Dolly, the major barriers to human cloning are the scientific challenges that remain incredibly difficult, maybe even impossible, to overcome. As it turns out, yanking a nucleus out of one cell and ramming it unceremoniously into another to make a whole new life is harder than it sounds. Who knew? Removing the original nucleus from the egg, for instance, is easier to do with some animals than others. Easier with cats and mice, harder with dogs and rats, and really, really hard for humans. Pulling the nucleus out also pulls out a bunch of proteins that are important for cell division. Without these, the egg can't develop beyond a single cell. For cats and mice, these proteins are far enough away from the nucleus to be left in the egg. But with humans, they're so close that current techniques are just not delicate enough to pick out one without the other. Even if we did manage to do this and successfully transfer a nucleus to develop it into a cloned child, that child will not be likely to live a full, healthy life until we could solve the problem of accelerated cell aging. You see, every time a cell divides, the ends of the DNA-containing chromosomes, called telomeres, shrink a little bit. After many divisions, they become so short that they can't divide anymore, and the cell dies. It's a natural process, but when you transplant a nucleus that's already been through a bunch of divisions, it's not got a full quota left, and so will die ahead of its time. For the clone, it would be like starting out life with the cells of an adult, with only a few decades of life left in them. Dolly the sheep died after just six years, half the lifespan of a normal sheep. Until we can find a way to extend telomeres and give chromosomes a new lease of life, the problems facing human cloning will not only be moral ones, but medical ones too. So perhaps human cloning is a good way out of reach, and perhaps that's a good thing. Does my hair really look that bad? Because that's bad. So do you think that we should wade into the moral quagmire to clone our fellow humans? And if so, what would you use your clones for? But please, keep it clean. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Earth Lab for more future science videos. He's gone. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs>